wear this necklace a lot and people often comment on the adorable brontosaurus. Because who doesn't love dinosaurs? But is it really a brontosaurus? Our story begins in the late 1860s. Two rival paleontologists, Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope, are trying to out-dinosaur hunt each other. They're showing up at each other's dig sites and there are claims of sabotaging digs and destroying fossils and bribing each other's crews. And so, as two grown men in a spat often do, they decide to outdo one another and each try and find the greatest number of fossils. This came to be known as the Bone Wars or the Great Dinosaur Rush. But in their haste to outpublish one another, sometimes mistakes were made. In 1877, Marsh published a notice of new dinosaurian reptiles from the Jurassic Formation. Fancy. In it, he describes several new dinosaur fossils and species, including the Apatosaurus. Now, he doesn't say much about it, mostly just describes its vertebra and the fact that it's about 50 feet long, but he adds another tally to his dinosaur list. In 1879, Marsh described another dinosaur species, the Brontosaurus. One of the largest reptiles yet discovered has been recently brought to light, and a portion of the remains are now in the Yale collection. This monster apparently belongs to the Sauropoda, but differs from any of the known genera in the sacrum. He estimates that it's about 80 feet long and adds another tally to his dinosaur list. The two sets of fossils then went on to lead very different lives. The Apatosaurus, or deceptive lizard, never gained much popularity and was never fully mounted, while the Brontosaurus, or thunder lizard, went on to become rather famous. A nearly complete skeleton was found, and in 1905 it was mounted in Yale's Peabody Museum, becoming the first sauropod skeleton on display anywhere in the world. This, along with an illustration in the 16th Annual Report of the USGS in 1895, helped the Brontosaurus gain popularity and become one of the most recognizable dinosaurs. But in 1903, Elmer Riggs, a vertebrate paleontologist at the Field Museum in Chicago, noticed a mistake. While studying Marsh's work, Riggs became convinced, based on bone shape, size and ossification, that the Apatosaurus and the Brontosaurus were actually the same animal, and that the Apatosaurus was just a juvenile Brontosaurus. Five separate species of Apatosaurus were described in Marsh's haste to find dinosaurs, one from just a single vertebra. Riggs felt that there were probably only two species of Apatosaurus fairly described in Marsh's work, and that the Apatosaurus excelsus was the one that matched up with the Brontosaurus skeleton. Following classification rules of the time, Riggs wrote that in view of these facts, the two genera may be regarded as synonymous. As the term Apatosaurus has priority, Brontosaurus will be regarded as a synonym. But despite Riggs' clarification, the name Brontosaurus had already captured public interest, and while dinosaur purists still called him the Apatosaurus, most of us learned about Bronte here. The conflict didn't reach much public interest until 1989, when the U.S. Postal Service decided to publish a stamp which included a picture of the dinosaur and labeled it a Brontosaurus. Now, dinosaur purists cried foul, but according to Riggs, Brontosaurus is an acceptable synonym. Alas, this naming confusion was not the only insult that the Apatosaurus suffered over its history. Well, I guess the biggest insult was extinction, but, you know. The poor Apatosaurus had also been given the wrong head. When Marsh's Brontosaurus skeleton was excavated, they didn't find a skull, so they just gave it one from another dig site. In the 1970s, John McIntosh and David Berman concluded that it was actually the skull from a different dinosaur, the Camarasaurus. They said that the true skull must closely resemble that of a related dinosaur, the Diplodocus, and that it would have a longer snout and protruding teeth. So, I call him an Apatosaurus, but some people call him a Brontosaurus. Either way, he's pretty gosh darn cute. Go forth. Do science. By the way, this cute guy hanging out in my background is known as the Brachiosaurus, or the arm lizard, because his forelimbs, or his arms, are longer than his back limbs, or his legs.